Hello everyone, thanks for watching. Welcome to the quick start guide for the Fathom software synthesizer. I was watching the first three videos I made and I realized they're just way too long. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to cover basically everything you need to know to get started using the synthesizer um, and we're going to do it quickly. So after you download the zip file, we'll go to the download folder, we'll cut this fathom.zip will go to our plugin folder wherever that may be paste it and extract it it's going to create um, the fathom folder here we're going to leave the programs and waveform folders where they are so that fathom can find them um, I tend to use two workstations I use both Ableton and Cubase so let's first launch Ableton and once that starts up we're going to go into options Oops options preferences one two three the fourth one down and we're going to browse for a plugin folder now normally you would always already have this set and you would just have to do a rescan but we'll browse to it and normally I would select the root of my plugin folder that has all my plugins but for the sake of the demo I'm only going to be using fathom so that today I'm just going to point it directly to the fathom folder so everything's set up in Ableton let's bring up Cubase and do essentially the same thing I'm going to click on any old um, project and in Cubase you want to go to Devices, Plugin Manager and at the bottom there's a plus sign and we're going to do the same thing. Today we'll point it directly to Fathom and hit OK and there's a little icon here for, for rescanning in Cubase and we'll let it do the scan and good news it found an extra plugin which is listed here. Close this dialog and in Cubase in our VST Instruments section under Rack Instruments, if I want to add Fathom to a track, I bring this down, select Fathom. Do I want to create a new MIDI track? Yes. And Cubase will bring up the front page of the interface. Let's get out of Cubase for now. So let's go back into Ableton. And now that the plugin is set up, I'm just going to bring up a very simple little project I have in preparation for the tutorial that has uh, one or two tracks. And I'm going to go to my plugin folder and I'm going to take Fathom and drop it into a track. And let's bring up the interface. So just some very basic things here. Um, on the left hand side, this is really pretty intuitive. Um, you have three types of audio components, oscillators, filters, and effects. Let's grab an oscillator. And to add audio components to your signal flow view in Fathom, you want to click and drag them from the left side into the center view. You can place them anywhere. We'll bring in a basic waveforms oscillator. Um, let's put a filter in there as well. Low pass second order resonant. Let's do uh, an effect. Now to connect components, it's also fairly intuitive. You grab the output from one component and drop it into the input of another to connect them. Um, so that's how you add components. To delete components, let's add something else to delete. Let's do a digital delay parametric filter. Um, to delete components, you simply select them and hit the delete button. We'll select the digital delay, hit the delete button. And incidentally, once you have all your components in the view, you can move them around anywhere you want and it will remember the connections and it will not break the connections when you move them around so you can put things uh, how you want them. Now a couple of very basic things to know about the signal flow view. To bring up the uh, bottom panel interface from component all you do is simply click on the component so that's we're now looking at the interface for the oscillator. Now if you click on a component a second time after you select it it's going to go into bypass mode, which means the audio goes through that component without being processed. And if you click on it a third time, it'll go into block mode, which means no audio goes through that component. So that's pretty obviously going through the filter. So let's play it again. We'll bypass the filter. And you can hear the reverb. And let's bypass the reverb. So now we're only listening to the oscillator without de disconnecting it. Let's block the reverb. Okay, so now we're listening to the reverb and we're bypassing.
bypass in the filter. Let's block the filter. So the filter's blocked. So now we're listening to the oscillator through both the filter and the reverb. And oscillators only have two states. Um, oscillators, there's no through mode. It's either processing or block. So let's block the oscillator. Now we're listening to all three components. So that's basically how the signal flow works. So now let's add some modulations. We're going to modulate the master volume. To modulate a dial, you want to click on the dial so that it's selected and the knob will turn white and then the add mod button will become highlighted. So let's hit that. And that will add a modulation slat to the matrix. And we're going to click on select modulator and it's going to be a new modulator. We'll select an ADSR and we can either hit OK or we can just double click on the ADSR. And let's change this envelope just a little bit. We'll get rid of this first segment here and move that there and give ourselves a little bit more decay. Now let's modulate another parameter. I'm going to choose the filter cutoff. So again, we um, select the dial. Let's turn the cutoff down to about 500. And again, I'm going to select the dial and hit Add Mod. And this time, when we select a modulator, let's choose an LFO. We'll change the modulation type to Add. Close the mod slat and let's turn up the modulation amount just a little bit. Now, once I have a dial modulated, if I want to change the modulator, I don't have to get rid of the modulation. I can click on the modulator icon and I can select a new modulator. So let's do that. Let's select um, an envelope this time instead of an LFO. And it's not going to delete the LFO. The LFO will still be there in the existing modulators list. Um, let's select, um, like I said, an envelope. And I'm just going to very quickly create a modulation here. Now, I discussed this in one of the other videos, but it's very simple, so I'll just do it again. If you have an um, envelope set up, um, a sub-pattern, you want to expand this pattern. If you click on the last point and then you increase the number of segments, it will um, duplicate the entire pattern. That's really handy. So let's listen to that now. Let's change the modulator. We don't have to get rid of the modulation we can um, reselect another modulator. And I can either go into an existing modulator. It has all the ones that I've used so far listed there. Or I can add a new one. Let's, this time, let's choose a sequencer. And I'll just very quickly uh, make a sequence here. So right now we have this dial modulated and we can go, it's very versatile. You can go in here and you can choose any modulation you want that you've already created without changing, without getting rid of the uh, modulation in the matrix. So let's do that very quickly. So that's basically how you do modulation. And if you want to delete a modulation, if you just click on the uh, mod slat and you hit delete, um, nothing's going to happen. If you want to delete a modulation, and this is a safety precaution against accidentally deleting it. If you want to delete a modulation, you have to expand it first and then you can hit delete. Now, 
Fathom gives you the ability to modulate a dial with more than one modulator. As a matter of fact, there's no limit. So let's do something interesting here. Let's um, delete this modulation. And again, we'll select, sorry, we'll select the partials. We'll add the LFO that we already have in there. So now we have the LFO going. And I'm going to add a second modulation to this dial. And the way that I do that, even though it's already modulated, I can select the dial again, hit Add Mod, and add a second modulation to that dial. And I'll just, um, again, go through some of the modulators. But this time, there's going to be two modulations on the same dial. And um, for the second modulation, I'll choose a different modulator. So now I have two modulations going on the same dial. So I need to inject a comment into this video here because I forgot to mention this before. You can change the order of modulations in the matrix, and it's easy to do. If you click on the texture on the left side, you can drag the modulation within the list. And just for the sake of example, let's completely reorganize this list. We'll put the volumes at the top. And uh, I don't know, let's put all the pitches together, pitch modulations. So once you reorganize your list, the cool thing is that if you, if I were to save the program right now and reload it, it's going to remember this order, and that order is going to be intact when you reload the program. And remember, if I click on the left side, actually, it also works if you click in the center. You can uh, drag the modulations. But if I click on the texture on the right side, what happens is I can drag the entire list up and down. And this is really useful if you have enough modulations in the list that they no longer fit within the uh, window size. And particularly, it's useful when you're clicking on the modulator to reselect the modulator. If you'll notice, as I mentioned before in this video, to get to the modulator, you expand the mod slat, and then you can um, select your modulator. But um, several users have correctly noticed that if you try and extend the bottom slat, of course, it's not going to be visible. And the solution is very easy if you just drag the entire list up then you'll be able to get to that bottom modulation. And the same would be true for selecting the um, modulation type as well. So that's basically how modulation works. So that's it for today. That should be enough information to get you started. Thanks for watching.